Welcome to Orlando, everybody, where earlier this afternoon the Florida Gators, of course, fell short to the Michigan Wolverines here at the Citrus Bowl, 41-7. to Over the course of the next 15 minutes, we'll break down uh, this game, this season, and even give you a sneak peek of what to expect in the fall of 2016. We'll kind of look into our crystal ball, so to speak. But first, let's break down what went down in Orlando. Yeah. The, the Gators were certainly the underdogs heading into this matchup, and they were looking to avoid three straight losses at the end of the season. Let's take a look how this game played out. Entering the game, so much was made about the two coaches, but eventually this one had a chance to play out. Out of the gate, Treon Harris hits Antonio Callaway for a gain of about 25 and into Michigan territory. Two plays later, Treon Harris looks to the air again, but Demarcus Robinson fails to bring the ball down over the tight coverage of Michigan's secondary tough luck play right there. But Jim McElwain rolls the dice with the dentist in to kick the field goal, not Austin Harden. It's an obvious fake, and U of M is ready for it, stuffing the play. Michigan with the ball now as runner Debion Smith is a load to bring down. He gallops into the Gators' yard with a sizable gain right there. Wolverines' drive is capped off with a six-point strike as Drake Johnson gets in the end zone for the game's opening score from four yards out. PAT good, making it 7-0 Michigan. Next drive, Treon Harris to Jordan Cronkite, and the freshman gets a nice gain. You have taking short passes for decent yards early. Confusion from Harris, direct snap to Kelvin Taylor. Taylor gives it to Antonio Callaway, and then Callaway floats it over to Treon Harris for the most unusual Gator touchdown. But six points is six points, so the score counts. PAT good, 7-7 ball game. Second quarter, Michigan goes to the air as Jake Rudock pump fakes, drawing in Vernon Hargraves, allowing receiver J.U. Chesson plenty of space and time to haul in the touchdown for another seven-point strike after the PAT. Michigan would add a field goal before halftime, and they led it intermission 17-7. to Peters looked ill-prepared to start the second half. Treon Harris getting dumped to the ground as tackle David Sharp got beat badly. Gators gave the ball back to Michigan, and Jake Rudock again continues to make the Gators' secondary pay. Vernon Hargraves getting beat deep this time by Michigan's J.U. Chesson. Two plays later, the Wolverines take it in out of the I formation to make it 31-7. Not much better a few plays into the fourth quarter either. It's Drake Johnson scores his second score of the game from eight yards out off the pass from Rudock, 38-7 in the fourth when it was officially declared ugly. Tough loss to end the season on for Florida. Here's Coach McElwain after the game. The case of getting your rump kicked in, that's what it was. Uh, our energy was good. We came out and played inspired football. Um, and uh, you know, just call it the way it is. They out physical us guys. Um, no doubt about it. And I mean, there's I hate to state the obvious all the time, but they, you know, they did a great job with their pad level um, and uh, really took it to us on both sides of the ball. Uh, McElwain, absolutely right in that uh, press conference right there, talking about how Michigan out-muscled Florida. It seemed that way from the second quarter on, and the stats were just as ugly as those highlights. Treon Harris, 8-21 uh, for 146 yards, one pick, zero touchdowns. Kelvin Taylor, he finishes his Gator career, 11 rushes for 55 yards. Antonio Callaway, five receptions for 75 yards. But the most telling stat of them all, total yardage. Michigan absolutely dominated here. 503 total yards to the Gators just with 273. Not good, not good. <laughs> that was really quite ugly to witness firsthand. But hey, we're going to take our first commercial break. Uh, when we come back, let's spin this in and, and talk some good things. How about this season? It wasn't all bad. Uh, certainly getting to 10 wins uh, was certainly good. But we're going to have some of the best sound bites and the best of the season coming up when we return to Orlando after this quick TV timeout. Welcome back to Orlando, everybody. Tough loss for the Gators, 41-7. And, of course, today's loss was sort of a, a bitter end to a really good season for the Gators. That's right. Most people really didn't expect them to make it this far at the beginning of the season. I was there. You were there. Max said, we're yeah. going to play this many games, and he was so confident in the team. Let's take a look back at how this year went. September was a perfect month for the Florida Gators. UF went 2-0 in their first two non-conference games and 2-0 in their SEC openers. 
The Gator defense looked as good as ever, playing against Kentucky to start the SEC slate. And the win over Tennessee is a game that will live in the minds of Gator fans for the rest of their lives. October was an interesting month for the Blue and Orange. Top five ranked Ole Miss came to the Swamp, and many expected the Rebs to put the hurt on the Gators. But Florida jumped on them early, and UF saw the potential of Will Greer and the Gator offense clicking on all cylinders. However, the very next game against Missouri would be the last game Greer would ever play at the university after he was caught failing a drug test for PEDs. On just a few days notice, Treon Harris was now running the ship, and at first he performed above expectations, helping the Gators nearly take down LSU in Baton Rouge, but the Gators just couldn't squeak out the win earning the team its first loss. After a bye, it was a game at Everbank Field in Jacksonville against the Georgia Bulldogs. Florida absolutely controlled the pace of play and dominated Georgia's offense for the second straight season. But November was mirrored with inconsistent offense and spotty quarterback play. The kicking game fell off the rails as well. UF mustered close wins over Vanderbilt and Florida Atlantic and a pretty decent win over South Carolina. But against Florida State, the Gators flirted with not scoring any points, losing 27-2. Next was Alabama in the SEC Championship game, the Gators' first trip to Atlanta since 2009. But the upset over Alabama was just too much to ask for, and the Gators lost their second in a row heading into bowl season. There were ups and downs and headline-grabbing stories, but Gator fans should be pleased that the program looks like it's back on the uptick. So with the loss today, the Gators' record on the year falls to 10-3. and three. Not too bad in Mac's first year. Yeah. You know, one of the things that really sets Coach Mack apart from all the other coaches is his personality. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So let's take a look back at the season at some of his greatest sound bites. They played their hearts out. They played their hearts out for the Gators and, and all the Gator fans and all the Gators that played before them. And, and uh, you know, I think, you know, down deep they were – you know, you just don't lose to Tennessee, and uh, they didn't. The opportunity, you know, for me to stand in front of your camera right there mm -hmm. probably has as much to do with him taking a chance on a no-name guy that, you know, is, is anybody, and yet along the way a lot of guys took a chance. You know, our defense played their tails off, and they had a great plan. I thought uh, the guys executed it. and. They communicated, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something, they practiced that way Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, perfect Thursday. They had a great walk through Friday, and the routine and the detail of the weekend, I was just, they're, they're, they're starting to understand maybe the why. Get that. It's like, who are you? Well, I'm, I, here's who I am. I'm that dog they dropped off down at the Humane Society, all right, and he has about a little bit of every breed in it, and Whatever the, whatever the situation is, you try to bring that breed out that, that helps success. You wonder sometimes why you do this. And, uh, you know, I only know one way of doing anything, and that's work hard. And uh, it's me remembering every day when we go into those games, writing their names on a stick of gum. Um, why I do this is to hopefully help. It's New Year's them. Day. Let's break down how the Gators will do in the fall of 2016. We'll give you a quick preview of what to expect this coming fall when we return from Orlando after this.